You're listening to That Music Podcast with Bryson Tarbett, the curriculum designer and educational consultant behind That Music Teacher and the Elementary Music Summit. Each week, Bryson and his guests will dive into the reality of being an elementary music teacher and how music can truly be transformative in the lives of the students you serve. Show notes and resources mentioned in this episode can be found at thatmusicteacher.com. Welcome back to That Music Podcast. I am super excited for you to be joining us today. We're going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite ways to use transitions in the lessons. So if you haven't listened to episode 47 of the podcast, I highly recommend you stop, go listen to that, and then come back to this one. Because in episode 47, we talk about my favorite ways to use seamless transitions in a lesson, why that's important, how we can make sure that we're using them to maximize our instructional time, keep our engagement up, but also keep our classroom management just super simple because the students are having fun and they're constantly being given something to do, even when it's something that's a little bit more of a relaxation thing or a little less less stressful that is allowing them to kind of have a little bit of a break during the lesson. So if you haven't listened to that episode, go ahead and listen to it and come join us back. But if you have already listened to this, let's talk about why story is important. As humans, we love the power of story. Think about the ways that we teach children, like young children, basic concepts, right? Stories. You know, there's books for, you know, teeth are not for biting and everybody poops and all these wonderful books that are just like ways that we can explain what the world is and how the world goes through story. If you think about just how stories began, it was just people talking to other people and sharing their expertise, whether that be through a fable or through sharing family history, things like that. Stories are incredibly innately human. And they're really good at keeping engagement and keeping our things in your memory. I know I remember stories from years ago that were told to me or read to me that if I was just kind of presented that information, I wouldn't remember it. Um, I'm thinking Magic School Bus or, you know, the Magic School Bus books or, you know, the, the, bo- the Boxcar Children and the Magic Tree House, all those wonderful things that they were told through story. I got that information because it was told through story. So that is another wonderful reason to use story in your classroom is not only is it helping your transitions, but it's also really helping that memory form, which let's be honest, That's what teaching is, (laughs) is getting students to understand concepts and skills and to get that from the short-term memory into that long-term memory. So what might using story look like? Now, you've probably heard about how stories can be used in early elementary classrooms to bring things together. But I truly believe that you can use storytelling in a way that is good for any elementary grade, even up to sixth grade, where I, you know, my my highest grade is sixth grade. I think that, again, it's just immediately human. So let's first look at the younger age. When I'm thinking of using stories, I have to go towards um, my kindergarten class because that is where I probably use stories the most because we're going through a lot of basic repertoire because this is the the first time they've had music class. And I like to keep bring things together. So let me start you off on one of my kindergarten plans. So I meet my students at the door. I say, oh my goodness, friends, we are going to go on adventure. We're not going to take a bus. We're not going to take a car. We're not going to take an airplane. What, are, what else could we take? They might say a tank or they might say a, a submarine. Uh, but eventually we land on, oh, we're going to take a train. Perfect. All right, I want you to make your best train and we're going to walk around the room. Engine, engine number nine. And we go around the room and we're going around. And I say, we, oh my goodness, we are coming up to to a hill. Ooh, the train is really heavy. It might struggle going up the hill. All right, are you ready? Let's try it. Engine, engine. And we do it slowly. So this is, hey, like we're getting into speed, tempo, right? And then once you get to the top of the hill, what's going to happen? We're going to go down. And then we go down the hill and we're going to do it faster. All right, so now we've done that a couple of times. We end up in a circle and I say, oh my goodness, all of that tree or, you know, our train was so heavy. I wonder what was in our train. What could be in our train? Coal, maybe cars, maybe it was a bunch of apples. Oh my goodness. I don't know. There, you know, apples could be that heavy. And then we could talk about different things that we can use to make apples. You can make apple butter, apple pie. And that reminds me of, oh my goodness, that one time I went up the apple tree and then I got to the top of the apple tree and there was one apple that was like really far away. So I reached up to the top and accidentally broke a branch. And then all the apples 
apples fell on me. Oh my goodness, that hurt kind of, uh, hurt a lot. But then I noticed there were all these different apples. So I took all the apples. I took them home and took them in the kitchen. I chopped them up. I cleaned them up. I made sure there weren't any worms in it. And I started making some apple pudding, apple pie. And then my mom came in. My mom said, where did you get all these apples? And I'm like, well. I went to the store and they were giving them away. And she said, did you ever tell a lie? And throughout that entire thing, I just, I just kind of, we went through, we did the entire chant. I climbed up the apple tree. All the apples fell on me. Apple pudding, apple pie. Did you ever tell a lie? And then we go right into the activity or maybe we go into using some manipulative or something. But what we're doing is we're really making sure that one activity, one repertoire, one piece of repertoire, one song, one game, one activity, whatever, is all moving together. And it doesn't need to be around the same theme. For instance, the tra train had nothing to do with apples. But you as a teacher can come up with a way of morphing the two. So for instance, if now we're at the apples and I said, oh my goodness, we ate all those apples and I left some on the counter. And the next morning there were some little nibbles out of it. I was like, Mr. Tarbit, did you, did you sleepwalk? Did you eat a bunch of pie? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't think it was me. And I go up closer and I realize there's nibbles on the apple pudding too. And I'm like, what is that? And all of a sudden I see this little mouse skitter across the, 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 the counter. And they go, oh no, a mouse. And there's always one kid that's like, oh, it's so cute. I'm like, okay. Um, and then I said, I'm going to do it. I don't want mice in my house. I like mice in the in in the the woods. That's fine. But what can we do to get, or what could we put get in our house to make sure that the mice don't eat our food? And someone might say a trap. I'm like, yeah, we could do a trap, but like, I don't know. That kind of sounds scary. I don't want to. Like, and then someone else might say a cat. And I'm like, yes, we could get a cat. And if the cat is in the house, the mice might want to stay away. Mouse, mousey, little mousey, hurry, hurry, do. And I might say. Well, what happens if the mouse doesn't hurry? And someone will scream, the cat's gonna get him! You're right, the cat's gonna get him. Or the kitty in the housey will be chasing you. And then again, we can move into wherever we want. We could play the game, we could do an activity. But again, we've used that transition, the power of story, to move from one piece to the next, or from one activity to the next. Or So... This might seem super basic, but the reality is, is it's super impactful and your students are going to be engaged the entire time if you're doing it right. So what might this look a little bit older? Because yes, it works a little bit older, a little bit on the younger kids. But honestly, I think sometimes if we're going to, if we're okay giving a little bit of cringe, our students are going to be so like, we're are going to love the stories if, especially if they've been using the stories all the way throughout. So sometimes for my, my sixth graders, I might kind of play up the shtick a little bit and like, Oh my goodness. I went to the Ohio state fair and I saw this giant pig. Oh my goodness. Do you guys know what it, a, 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 you know, a pig is? But they didn't call it a pig. They call it something else. And they get a boar. No, it wasn't a boar. Um, oh, it was a sow. And we go, our old sow is getting ready fat. Kaima, chemo, kaima. And we go through the whole shtick again. And again, even moving things through. So we get to that. We, well, we could get to the end of that and we can move into another activity. You don't have to make it this huge novel. We, ideally, it's short. We're going from one activity to the next in a, a simplified way that allows them to have that that pivot point rather than, all right, everybody stop. Now we're doing this. We want them to be gently brought along with us on the journey rather than, all right, now we're going to get some whiplash and move over here. Now it's time for rhythm stuff, right? We want things to be going through. The reality is story can be incredibly impactful for our lessons. And it doesn't need to be this super crazy, wonderful, high intensity novel it just could be as simple as pretending something happened to you my my younger kids they'll probably think i live the most extravagant life because you know i i, I had it my cat she was missing for a while and then she went and visited the queen and then she came back and she had butter all over her whiskers right <laughs> because i whenever you're able to bring it into your life it turns that magic on it lights up that story you know the innately human we want to know what happens next and, and it allows that that short-term memory to go into long-term memory because it's kind of like attached to that story. And I think the classroom management and transition side, you know, aside, being able to have things more concrete in a child's memory is huge. So that's why I use stories in my classroom. 
And sometimes I plan them out and sometimes I kind of make it up as I go. Um, sometimes they work better than others. But I love using stories. They're my favorite type of way to do a transition. And I think that if you have a chance, if you want to take a chance and like, all right, I'm going to try something new. Try one class, whether it be your kindergarten class, first grade class, I don't care. And make one lesson where you are focused, at least primarily, on your transitions being part of a story. And see what happens. And then I want you to try it again the next time, like you have a, like the same class or the same grade, but a different class and see what you can do to improve it. And that kind of iteration when you're trying the same thing on different classes is where the magic comes in because you're gonna start noticing where students are lighting up, where students are getting bored, what students are really you know, engaged. And that's how you can use that in future lessons. I hope you'll give this a shot. I hope you'll reach out and let me know how you um, put some transitions in your lessons through story uh, and how it went. I really hope you'll reach out and let us know how your little experiment went. Send us a message, hello at thatmusicteacher.com, or you can DM us at That Music Teacher. We'd love to hear from you. Um, with that being said, thank you so much for listening to this episode of That Music Podcast. It would mean the world to me if you would leave a review wherever you're listening. Ideally, we'd love a five-star review, but even if you leave one below five stars, we'd love for you to let us know in the review what we can do better and what you'd love to see more of in the podcast. With that being said, we'll see you right here next week for That Music Podcast.